Praise God. Praise the Lord, man. Hallelujah. Um, before we, we start, I'd like us to just um, thank God this evening. Bless the name of the Lord for uh, a great time. This, let's just open up our mouth and say, Lord, we thank you. Lord, thank, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. For your mercy. Open up your thank mouth you and worship your name. Give God we give praise. you all the praise. Worship him. Give Lord. you all the adoration. Come on, give him the name. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Thank you for your word. You are miracle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Your Thank you for is your Thank you. name. Is Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your peace. Yes. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. I don't know where I would be without you. Thank you for your mercy, O God. Thank you for your grace. We Come on, worship. open up your mouth and worship. Your name is Yah. Praise Amen. at this very moment. You are Give him praise at this very moment. Open up your, your mouth wherever you are. Say, Lord, I thank you tonight. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your anointing. Thank, thank, thank you for the presence. Thank you for the very presence of God. He is constantly with me every day of my life. Can you just open up your mouth and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for thank my father. You. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. Yeah. Thank you for my life. Your name, thank you. Yeah. Blessed be thy name. You are Blessed be thy name. Walking Blessed be thy name. Your name is in the name of Jesus. Thank you for going out and coming in. Your name thank you for calling us out of out of dungeon, out of darkness, and establishing us into light. Come on, give God praise. Some of us were not we are supposed to be we were supposed to be harmonies between doing things based on where we're coming from, but the grace of the Lord has been so gracious to you, he has called you out of darkness. Can you just give God praise and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for calling me out of darkness and establishing me to light. Thank you for the light of me. Some of you know where you're coming from, you know the family you're coming from. But God has separated you. He has called you as a light. He has called you. He said those that, the Bible says that those that were in darkness, He called them out of darkness and He made them light. He made them to be light to their generations. Can you say, Lord, I thank you for making me a light. Thank you for calling me a chosen generation. There were generations that were not chosen. But God says, the Bible says, for ye are a chosen generation. You are a royal priest. You have been called out of infirmity. You have been called out of weakness. You have been called out of out of the limitations of other generations. And God says, He says, for you are a chosen generation. He say, He say, you are a royal priest. Can you see how important you are in the agenda of God? Can you say, Lord, I thank you for my life. Oh, brani, oh, skamala, shamle, shala, sabatana, kopala, hazis. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the In Jesus' mighty name, we are giving thanks. Amen. I want you to I want you to pray tonight and say, Lord, I I am ready to receive that which you have for me in this meeting. You see, every meeting there is a different package, there's a different thing God wants to communicate to the sons of men. And, and women, especially those who are who are who are interested in hearing. Can you say, Lord, as I've come tonight, this is not a normal meeting. I've come to receive. I've come to receive your presence in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that Moses spent time with God in the mountain, and when he came down from the mountain, his face was glowing with the presence of God. It was obvious that he had spent time with God. Can you say, Lord? 
as I spend time with you even this evening, oh God, so obvious that I'm coming from from your very presence. Oh, Rabban, Ashamble, oh, Sapanish. There is a water, there is a water of life. Oh, I know that you have been drinking water. There is water of life that the Holy Spirit gives. I know you have been eating bread. There is a bread of life that God gives. Can you ask for that bread tonight? Can you say, Lord, would you give me of this bread tonight? Would you give me of this bread tonight? In one minute, come and pray the Holy Ghost and say, Lord, would you give me of this bread tonight? I have eaten of other bread. I have tasted other bread. Would you give me the bread of your presence? Especially baked from the throne of heaven. What, Lord, would you give me this bread? Would you give me the water that I will take? I will take and I will never bless again. Would you give me this water tonight? You give us this water tonight. Would you give us this bread tonight? Would you give us this bread tonight? I am tired of eating other bread. I'm tired of drinking water and yet I'm still not satisfied. Lord, would you give me your water tonight? Oh, give me of this water tonight. And I will test no more. That I will test no more. That woman, that woman at the well, she thought she had the best of water. But Jesus told her, He said, The water I'm going to give you, the water I'm going to give you, you will not test. Let it flow out of me tonight. Let it flow out of me tonight. Let the fountain of life flow. In the name of Jesus, I want to drink of the fountain of life. There is the fountain of life. There is a place called the fountain of life. And that is the water I want to drink tonight. Oh, Branda Mashante, the practice of time. Are there men and women hungry for God's presence here tonight? Are there men and women hungry for something greater, for something greater than what you are used to, than what you have known, than your experience, than your knowledge? Are there men and women hungry tonight? And say, Lord, I am thirsty. I am thirsty. Oh God, hunger, Lord, you come and quench my hunger. Thank God for the for the anointing. Thank God for where you have been in the past. Thank God for the past achievement. But there is something greater. There is something greater. Oh, I'm interested in that which is greater. I'm interested in that which is greater. I'm interested in that which is greater. Oh, Brana Masha, Patansi, the Pan, higher calling, Rabba, Pasha, and the Yazayas. I'm interested in that which is greater tonight. In the name of Jesus, I'm interested in that which would transform the lives of men tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm interested in that which will change my generation for good. In the name of Jesus, thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' Amen. mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Scripture says, scripture says that the entrance of the word of God giveth light and it gives understanding to the simple. In just one minute, can you say, Lord, I yield myself to your word this night. The only, the only person that will receive the word of God is the man who is simple at heart. Jesus. The one who is simple at heart. That is the man that will receive the word. Lord, I come simple. I come simple. I come naked. I put down. I put, I put down my qualifications, my progress, my achievements. In the name my, of my Jesus, I, come I, put it, I put them in down. The I put them down tonight. The I put them down tonight. I put them down tonight. Moses, 
greater, for something greater. I know you have heard something to decide the peace. The Father must have told you. The Red One must have told you the experiences of the past. But God told him, Can you put down your experience and journey with me? And journey with me. There is a journey that the Lord is calling us tonight. Are there men and women ready to journey tonight? Oh, Bralabashanda, in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. I want to um, especially appreciate the leadership of this prayer meeting tonight. Thank you for this great um, privilege opportunity to um, share the word of God with us tonight. I, I don't take it for granted. I see it as a very great privilege. And I appreciate God for, for having you know, put it in your heart to allow this small boy to minister in this platform. Praise God. Um, yeah, so let's navigate tonight. We'll be talking about um, beyond logos, beyond logos, beyond logos. Now, um, first, I'd like to define what logos is, and then um, look at what rema is. Um, the foundation of this of this teaching tonight is based on. You know, last week we, I'm building from the foundation of last week. What we, what we did last week. I want to appreciate. God for the great um, um, song that he used last week to minister to us. It was such an awesome time in God's presence. Praise God. So tonight, we'll be looking at going beyond logos. Now, when you talk about logos, for those who are in language, in language department, or those who have dealt with language, you understand that logos has to do with the words, you know, the combination of letters to form words, all right? You combine letters, alphabets, alphabet or different kind of alphabet and then you form the word for instance if you want to get the word justice you have to combine a letter j a letter u a letter s you know and put them together it then gives you a word you know now logos in, in, in bible structure logos logos is is the kind of word right it is a kind of word it doesn't make so much impact in the spirit it is um the knowledge that the knowledge you get from Lugos is is classified to be the head knowledge, right? Now it is classified to be is identified to be head knowledge. So you see people who are very vast in the scriptures. You know, I was having a conversation with someone, and then the person mentioned scriptures that he has read and mentioned certificates he's gotten in the scriptures. You know, concerning his navigation with. Bible, you know, as much as it is very important to have a knowledge about the word, it is far beyond that. And I saw another person who was arguing somewhere, you know, time spent some time in Nigeria, and uh, you know, I was having this discussion with someone, and then the person was arguing, trying to you know bring up argument based on the scriptures. Now. The, the the end factor of the head knowledge would always need to be it would always make you to appear as someone who is who is in the know right somebody who has the knowledge now not so much is being done with this knowledge now, I'm going somewhere I want you to follow me gradually tonight now you gather a lot of knowledge then you don't use it it's not you know, at some point in my life, I began to read the Constitution of Nigeria. The purpose, the reason why I was reading the Constitution of Nigeria was so that when I went to, you know, then I was saying when I was growing up, I said I was going to do, I was going to be a lawyer. And so I started reading Nigeria's Constitution. So, so to have, you know, the head knowledge, so I can win arguments. So if somebody is talking about politics, I can say according to Section 1 and Section 2, this is what... This is what this thing says concerning. This is what it is. This is uh, what the law has concerning this particular thing. So that was my, that was my dream. You know, that was my dream. Now the Bible is beyond that. The Bible is not a literature. It is a spiritual book. It is. It is. Everything about the Bible is spiritual. In fact, the Bible is the most sacred sacred living testaments in this in the whole wide world 
So um, you need to understand that we are gradually entering into um, a time where people will begin to tell you that everything in the Bible is wrong. And this is as a result of the fact that they gave it the interpretation based on the head knowledge that they got. Right? Now, I'm doing something. I'd like us to look at the book of um, 2 Timothy chapter Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse number 7. Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse number 7. The Bible says that the Bible was talking about a kind of people. A kind of people. He said that always learning and never being able, never, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Let me say that again. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So they want to gather for themselves, just like me, just like um, I gave my, uh, you know, I gave an example of myself trying to learn, study the constitution of Nigeria so I can win an argument, you know, growing up. That was the mindset. But the word of God is different. So what the devil wants to do is to produce people who would what have the head knowledge and it has nothing to do with their spirit it has nothing to do with who they are now when moses spent time with god in the mountain when he came down from the mountain the bible records that his face was glowing with the presence of god there is something if you if what you really encountered is the right word there is a signature that appears in your life if if what you encountered is not head knowledge if it is the word of god the spirit given life if it is that word there is what a signature in your life it it is it is it is obvious for people to see the blind can see it people can touch it people can can handle it the bible records that when he came down from the mountain people saw that I mean, Moses had, there was no reason why Moses had to tell them from door to door, oh, I've been, do you know where I've been? I've been, I've been with God. No. They saw the presence of God. It was so clear to me. It was crystally clear. That is what happens to a man who has spent time with God. Now, if Moses could spend 40 days in the mountain with God and came down with that presence, how much more about you if you spend the entire, in your entire life with God? Imagine how your life would turn out to be. Imagine, oh my God, just like just most, just his face alone was glowing. The Bible says that they couldn't, people couldn't look up to him, so they had to, he had to cover his face with a veil, because they couldn't, they couldn't look at him. The presence was so strong, it was so mighty upon him. Why? Because he spent time with God. There is something that happens in a man's life. There is something that happens to a man that has spent time with God. When you spend time with God, you come out of God's presence. You are oozing. I mean, it is the presence, the presence, the aroma of that presence. You know, if somebody is like somebody who applied perfume, and then you you you're walking on the street or you're walking on the road, and then somebody asks you, "Oh, come on, I love your perfume. What's what's the name of this perfume?" They perceive it. You don't need to tell people this is the perfume I'm using. They are going to be the one asking you what is the name of this perfume. That is the way the presence of God is. Praise God. That's the way the presence of God is. Now God wants you to go beyond beyond letters. Bible says that is that for the letter kill it. You see that? Is that the letter kill it? Is that but the word the word give it life. There is something about the word that brings life to, to a dead spirit, a dead man, to a dead person. Let me tell you something. You don't have to be dead physically for this word to give you life. Sometimes you are in a crossroad. You don't know what to do. You are confused. You have um, talked to some persons. You are yet to get a solution to your problem. You don't even, you're just so confused. That is like operating from the realm of death. Because at that time, you're clueless. You don't even understand what is going on. But then, when the word of God comes, it gives you life. It's, it quickens your spirit. It quickens your spirit. The Bible says, quicken us. Quicken us so that we will live. Then the Bible says that, you see, if that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ of Nazareth from the dead, 
He says, if you find expression in your mortal bodies, he said, it will do what? He said, he will quicken your mortal bodies. He will quicken you from your inside. The reason why some of us will read the Bible like literature is because we are not quickened yet. It's because the spirit has not found full expression in our mortal bodies yet. It's because we are still operating on, we are still operating with the mortal mindset. The spirit of God that quickened, had, he has not found expression in us. Scripture says, it's saying, if that same spirit. So it means that there was a spirit that found expression in the life of Jesus. The Bible says that when Jesus came to the surface of the earth, after he was being baptized, he said he was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He was led by the spirit into the wilderness. And the Bible says that after he was, after he has, he has been tempted, he has been tempted by the enemy. The Bible says that angels came to minister to him. So we need to understand these things. So when Jesus was telling his disciples, he told his disciples, he said, see, in, in John chapter 6, verse 63, you might want to read that. In John chapter 6, verse 63, he was telling his disciples, you see, the words I speak to you, they are spirits and life. Now, he was not just making that statement to entice them to listen to him. No, he wasn't trying to convince them to listen to what he was saying. No, the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1, he said, in the beginning was the word. He said, and the word was with God. And the world is God. Now that's to tell you that the world that we're talking about here is what? Jesus. He is the life-giving spirit. So he says, he says, he says, if this word, if this word finds expression in you, Malakapasi, he said, he will, it will make something to erupt from your inside. It will quicken your, oh my God, it will quicken your mortal bodies. It will quicken something in your spirit. All of a sudden, somebody, somebody who, who is sick in your, in, your, in your environment, God just tells you to go and lay hands on the person. You just lay hands on the person and then the person is healed. Somebody is mad. You know, you know I've seen somebody who is mad. Madness. And then... And then this man of God has spent time with God, was praying. He just came, came out from his praying chamber. And then he didn't have to say so much words. The Holy Spirit just told him, hug this boy. He hugged the boy who was mad. There was, the, every attempt has been done to, to curtail his madness, but nothing, nothing, could stop, you know, nothing could stop that madness. But this man of God just came out from God's presence. And then he came out from the place of prayer. And then he hugged the boy. And then the boy became normal. He said someday, one day that he was studying the word and he, he came across the word that says that, that, he, that you can never be poor again. He came across the, that word. That word, you see, you see, what? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Now, the word that, that transformed the life of Oyedeko was not just a mere word. It wasn't a mere word. It was a spirit that was inclusive in that word he found expression in his life and then he came out and said i can never be poor again the reason he said that is because there was an encounter there was an encounter that word found expression in his life it has gone beyond the logos it has gone beyond letters that kill it it has it has it is now operating as a spirit as a life-giving spirit as the one that quickens it quickens your mortal bodies as the one that quickened, that is what he was operating in. And then he came out and said, come on, I can never be poor again. Now, if you think the word, what he said is just an ordinary word, you can, I've seen people who have said I can never be poor again several, 10 times, 100 times, and they are still, in fact, they are poorer than they are, they are today. Is it true? The reason is that the difference is that one was dealing with spirit and one was dealing with letters. You need to understand that, that what God wants you to do, what God wants you to deal with, is not just the letters. It's not the letters. It is good to have knowledge about the word, but God wants you to go beyond that. A lot of persons can quote John 3.16. An unbeliever can quote John 3.16. The father was watching an interview of a Muslim who was given a, a lecture. Who was given a lecture. And he was quoting John 3.16. And he was, trying to, he was trying to talk about some stuff there. 
that that man such men such men or such people they don't have the understanding of the spiritual the the the, the world that quickens the bible says that for a kind of man does not understand the things of the spirit it doesn't make sense to him when you're telling a kind of man the things of the spirit he's laughing he doesn't he doesn't understand what you're saying he doesn't understand what it means that that a man a man can be can be dead and god quickens you up to go and lay hands on the person and then the person comes back to life Idahosa was, when he was alive, Archbishop Benson, Idahosa was going from house to house looking for dead people to raise up. Now, these things are not because they are pastors. I need you to understand. It's not because, oh, you will say, oh, come on, this person is a pastor. Is, this one is a teacher. No, you don't have to be a pastor to operate in that level of power, of grace. These things are available to you. It, the reason why you are not operating in it is because you don't understand. Is because you have not given yourself to it. You have not yielded your spirit to it. To it. You have not yielded your mind to it. Some of us are still like me, or you know, like me when I was thinking. Uh, you know, I was reading the Nigerian Constitution so that I can I can have enough proof to argue to you know to prove to people that I actually have enough knowledge about Nigerian Constitution, or I can win so that so I, so so to win an um, argument. God wants you to go beyond that. So what the devil wants to do is that he wants you to he wants you to keep building. He wants you to keep building on things, head knowledge that will not make much impact. In fact, what changes a man's life is beyond the head knowledge. The Bible talked about Moses. When Moses got to the Red Sea, listen to this. Moses got to the Red Sea. The children of Israel began complaining, oh, come on, you should have just allowed us to stay in Egypt where we eat our cucumber and all of that and then stay in peace and nobody would trouble us and all that. You know, they were just complaining. But Moses, oh my God, Moses based on his navigations with God. Why the children of Israel, where they were seeing the sea, Moses based on his navigations, based on his understanding with God, based on what God has said to him, he was seeing a dry land. So other people were seeing Red Sea. Oh, we're going to die here. The children of Egypt, they are going to kill us. They are going to do this. They are going to do that. Moses was seeing a dry land in the midst of the Red Sea. What do you see tonight? God is speaking to someone here. See beyond the letters. See beyond the logos, see beyond the word. Those ones, they kill, they, 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 they will kill your spirit. But see beyond that, there is a version of the spirit. So somebody, someone else will see the Red Sea and say, oh, come on, um, okay, you know, we are in technology era right now, so um, let's call somebody to build a, a bridge for us. Why another person, somebody will be building bridge based on his head knowledge? Oh, come on, this is... This is not supposed to be a challenge. Let's just build bridge. We have engineers here. We have um, we have a lot of persons in you know fast in the engineering level. So let them construct bridge for us to pass. That is what someone else would be thinking about. But the man of the spirit will come to that place. He is not reasoning the way ordinary men are reasoning. You know why? Because something has encountered his life. That's what we're saying. The word that will impact your spirit. The word that will impact your life. Is the very world that has encountered that you have had diverse encounters with. You think that what changed Paul was just um, the preachers? It wasn't just the preachers. It wasn't. Paul was a custodian of the law. He knew everything about the Jewish law. He was a custodian. So in his mindset, what he was doing was right before God. But what changed Paul? What changed his life was what. The encounters that he had about Jesus. You know, one day I posted and I said to people, I said, um, it is good you talk about the resurrection of Jesus. It is good you talk about how Jesus resurrected from the dead. It is good. But we have a generation that is seeking signs and wonders. So the generation would only believe when they see the signature of God in your life. So tell us, don't tell us about how God, how Jesus resurrected from the dead. It is good story to hear. But tell us what that word did in your life. When you read that word, what impact, what result can we see? When we look at your life, can we see the signature of God in your spirit? Can we see the signature of God in your life? 
men are not looking at the word that comes out of your mouth but they are looking at the signature the signature the signature that a man can go to a place and they say truly truly this person is a child of god truly this person there's something about this person there's something different about you you don't look like the the the, the the other, other people, something different about you. Why? Because you have done what? You have been growing in God. So God wants us to grow beyond the letters. Beyond knowing John 3.16 and quoting it. And, you know, telling the unbeliever, oh, me too, I can quote the word. You know one thing that happened one time? There were these men who were watching. They were watching um, they were watching the disciples, how they were raising the dead, how, how they were performing miracles, signs and wonders. And then based on what they observed, they went to do the same thing. They saw a madman. And then they, 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 they wanted to do the same. They wanted to practice the same thing that they had observed. But what they failed to understand was that these apostles, these disciples, they were what? Men of prayer. They were, they, Jesus had trained them up. Jesus had given them the grace Jesus had trained them to go beyond the normal world to what? To the spiritual life, to the spiritual world. That is to say, Jesus was telling them, he said, the word I speak to you, their spirit and life. So what Jesus was speaking to them, he was transforming their life. All of a sudden, somebody who was, who was who, who could get angry anyhow, Peter could always get angry anyhow. He was always getting angry anyhow. But the word transformed his life. It transformed his mentality. It transformed everything about him. That's what we're saying tonight. That the word is able, is capable to, to transform your life. The word that will transform your life is the spirit word, the logos, not the papers. Praise God. So those two, those those people, the, the, the demon in that in that madman dis, disgraced them, tore their clothes. And it was the demon was telling them, he said, see, come on. I know Jesus, I know. I know Paul, I know the disciples. Who are you? That's to tell you that demons understand. See, demons understand when a man is given the right word. You need to understand this. Demons understand when you are, when the word is coming from the spirit, when the word is coming from God, and when they understand when the word is coming from just a head knowledge. Demons understand the what the, the, the identities of men in the spirit. So when, when, when those people were saying, they were trying to cast out the demon, the demons in that madman began to check their lives in it. And they found out that these people, they had they the, 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 the words, but they were not rooted in the spirit. They had no identity in the spirit. No, they, they had not encountered the word yet, but they could speak the word. But they had not encountered the real word. And then, and then, being that they had no bearing in the spirit, the demons had to disgrace them. You need to understand that it is, it is good for you to quote the word. But can you go beyond the word? That is what transforms life. That is what changes life. That is what would transform. You see, a chain smoker can only be transformed by the word. Not necessarily by the word you speak to the person. But by, by the spirit that comes, that flow with the word. You know, Paul said to, Paul was talking to um, um, some people. But before that, I like to read um, Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 8 from verse 31. Acts chapter 8 from verse 31, the Bible talked about Philip. Now, let me give you the background of Philip. Philip was just an ordinary person. Philip was not an apostle. Philip was not a, was not um, um, a teacher. He was one of the people that was sharing, you know, the tables. You know, when 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 commotion, you know, came up in the church and there was confusion, and then Peter said, "Come on, let's raise, let's you know, appoint people that will be in charge of uh, food." Philip was among the people sharing food in the church. Philip was not a pastor, but the word, as Peter, as the the the, the ministers were ministry. The life of Philip was transformed by the word. See, there were many, there were few men and women, there were few men in the scriptures that experienced spiritual transport. 
And Philip was among those people that experienced, even Peter himself could, did not experience spiritual transport. So in Acts chapter 8 from verse 31, the Bible talked about in the scriptures. I was reading it. He had he had he had this keen attention, he had this interest to read the word. But as he was reading it, it wasn't making sense to him. The only, the only, at best, at best, the the, the, the knowledge you could he could get from that word was what head knowledge, which was not supposed to, which which cannot take him far beyond in God. And you need to understand that a time will come in your work with God that you will collide with things, you will collide with demons. It is only the world that you have encamped in your spirit. It is only the word that you have gathered in your oh my god it is it is that word that has that has you know transformed your life it that that is the word that will set you free that day yeah it is the word that will set you free that day so this guy was reading he was reading the book of Isaiah. he wasn't understanding what he was talking about when the spirit saw when the holy spirit saw his interest the holy spirit sent philip all of a sudden, Philip from one place transported from one place to the desert, and then he met him, and then he asked him a question. He said, "Understand thou what thou readest?" The man said, "How would I understand except a man puts me through?" And then Philip, based on the navigations he has had with God, the the openings, the access that he has had with the Word of God, began to explain the Scriptures, precept upon precept, lines upon lines. Oh my God, by the time he was done ministering to this guy, explaining that scripture that this guy has been reading for hours that he didn't understand, the guy by himself opened up his mouth and said, See, there is water here. Come and baptize me. You see, I am do I'm, I don't want to do religion again. I've been doing religion for long. I've been a church boy for long. I've been a church woman for long. I don't want to do church again. I want to... if." god of mercy if this thing if you if you encounter this thing and it became life to your spirit philip if you if this thing you are telling me trans was what was responsible for the transformation of your life he said this same thing can you give me this same thing tonight and then he baptized him and then it is history has it today that the, the gospel one of the some of the gospels that reached africa was through that man you see that Somebody was reading, he had no understanding. All he could understand was head knowledge, which was never going to make any part in the nations, in the continent of Africa. All right? So God needed to give him the right word. God needed to have, make him have an encounter with the word. And then when he went back to Ethiopia, he started discipling men and women for God. We need to understand that it is time. The devil doesn't want you to go beyond the word, the, the, the logos. He wants you to dwell there. He wants you to have your domain there. You see, let me tell you something. The logos makes you weak. It makes you weak. You're not strengthened. Oh, you can produce it. You can produce, oh, this is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. But that word has, never, has not had encounter with you. As I'm speaking tonight, I'm seeing people, men and women here in this meeting, the Lord is going to be opening you up to encounters. It might be scriptures that you can even quote, but he's going to use those scriptures as encounters. It was in Lagos. I was invited one time to minister in the north. And, and as I was going to that journey, it was about, I was going on the road. It was about 14 hours. And I got to the meeting. God did great things. As I was coming back, the Holy Spirit whispered to my spirit. He said, he said, justice. He said, because you have left Lagos, you have left your comfort zone to this very place that men and women would not want to go. Men and women of your generation would not want to go. This place that, in fact, as, I'm, as I talk to you, that place, Boko Haram had bombed that place for some time. So, it, so he said, as because you have left your comfort zone and, and gone to this place, he said, from this day onward, he said, your lines will begin to fall in prison places. Now, I want you to see the difference. I had read that scripture before, that your lines will fall in prison and places. It didn't make so much sense to me. Until that very word that I got in my spirit. And to, to show you that, that, that God was true to his word, I, I got back to Lagos, 
God started opening doors. Potter started opening. You see, there are things that, oh my God, mm, there are things that the spirit, the, the spirit, will, it will open you up to a great, to great things that your eye will never see if you are still operating on the level you are. You know, in in Revelations, Bible says that God began to call John the Beloved. He said, "Come up, Peter, that I will show you. I want to show you what is yet to come." He said, "Come up, so that I will show you what is yet to come." It means that that statement simply means that from where he was standing, he cannot assess God. From where John the Beloved, this very John that was fried, fried, and yet God saved him. From where he was standing, from his platform, he cannot assess the very thing that God wants to pour upon his inside. So God had to tell him, come up, Peter. Some of us tonight, I am glad to tell you that God wants you to come up, Peter. Beyond religion. Oh, we know you attend church. We know you were born in church. We know your father is a pastor. We know your mom is a pastor. But beyond that, God is saying, can you come up, Peter, tonight? There is something greater. There is something bigger that I want to show you. Paul was talking to talking to a church. He said, see, I did not come to you with words of men. Words of men, they are okay. But at best, at best, what the word of men can do is that he can only deceive. He said, I didn't come to you with deceptive words of men. He said, but I come to you with the words, with power, demonstration of power and the Holy Ghost. That's what I came to, to you with. I I come to you with the very gospel of Jesus that once he enters into a man, it transforms life. There are so many people in pulpits today in, in different places. Yeah, ministering, teaching, preaching, but they are yet to encounter the very thing that they are preaching. They are yet to encounter it. Would you ask God tonight and say, Lord, there is a place in you that I have not entered yet. You know yourself more than I do. There is, uh, even me, I am still very hungry for God's presence. I'm still very hungry for more. There is more in God. There is more, there is more in God, deeper than where you are right now. It is not, see, you can, you can, oh my God, an, an usher in the church can just lay, can just say, oh, you're welcome. And somebody who, who has headache, the headache would disappear. These are places that God wants to call you into. These things are not meant for pastors alone. Operating in the power of God, operating, operating in the in these dimensions, they are not only for pastors or for leaders in the church. You can assess it from where you stand. Can we pray tonight? Come on, talk to God tonight. Talk to God tonight. I know the Lord is laying words in your spirit. Can you talk to God tonight? It's supposed to be just a few words, few words. Can you talk to God tonight? Oh, brother, my shanty, cavalli, grandes. Talk to God tonight. Talk to God tonight. Talk to God tonight. The Bible is not written for prosperity. It's not written for... It's not written for, for salvation alone. The Bible is about the kingdom of God. From Genesis to Revelation is about the kingdom of God. So if you are not operating fully into the kingdom of God, can we pray tonight and say, Lord, there are things that I don't know. Open up my eyes that in seeing I will see. That in hearing that I will hear. Come on, talk to me. I need you to pray right now. I Ralibo Shandele Pratis to Pratanda Silado Ralido Shantele Prakapata Sika Pasis. Come on, there is a spirit involved in the world. Come on, there is a spirit involved in the world. The reason why the word can correct you is that the word of God is written. It's written to correct men. It's written to correct men. It's written. So that men can be corrected. The word of God is written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Just so that the man of God will be thoroughly punished. So that in the ministry, he will minister.
that life and spirit. Can you pray to that and say, Lord, this very truth has come out the expression in my life here. Can you find expression in my life to this truth? I am hungry for something deeper. I am hungry for something greater. Thank God for the level that you have operated in. But there is something greater. Thank God for your academic, academic, academics. Thank God for that. Thank God for your achievement. Thank God for your profession. Glory to God for the places that you enter. But there is something great in your work with God. Glory be to God for the knowledge that you have received. Glory be to God for the word that you can quote. Glory be to God because you have finished the scriptures, you have finished the Bible from Revelation. From Genesis, from Revelation. Glory be to God. But there is something more. And I came to drag you to Koinonia with God tonight. I came to drag you to Koinonia with God tonight. Can you draw near to God tonight? I came to draw men and women. In a place called, in a place called the place of fellowship. There is a place of fellowship. There is a place of fellowship. That is the place God wants to tell you. The place of brokenness, oh Lord. Tell you what you don't want to hear. So many people want to move from that place. But that is the place that women have made. That is the place of transformation. That is the place of beauty. That is the place of lure. Suddenly, if a weak man goes into that place, he comes out strengthened. If a dead man goes into that place, he comes out alive. There is a word that makes it alive. There is a word that makes it alive. Jesus spoke to the woman at the well of water, at the well, and Jesus told her, What you are celebrating is not the real water. There is a real water that I give. If you take of this water, it will transform your life. If you take up this water, oh, you will never thirst again. Come and pray the Holy Ghost here. Shanta kapasila da da kasila. Rana man teko pasila pandesh. There is a water tonight. There is a water tonight. There is a fountain tonight. Oh, there is a fountain tonight. I take up the fountain. Come and eat. Come and eat of the bread of life. Please come and eat it. Oh, I know you have eaten bread. But there's something called the bread of life. Can you eat of this bread of life tonight? Rana masamble go pasila has. Oh, panasila te. He said, picking us, picking us that we will leave. He said, picking us that we will leave. Ask God to clean your eye with eye salve tonight. Ask Him to clean your eye with eye salve. That in seeing that you will see. Ask Him to clean your, your receptacles. Ask Him to make your receptacles to come alive. So that when God is speaking to your mind, when God is speaking to your spirit, you can speak your things from heaven. You can pick your things away from ordinary men, away from this world. You can pick your things. You can pick your things, and you begin to call them forth. How do you think that men like Daniel survived in, in Babylon? They were they were men and women that could pick your things beyond the picture. They could and God made them legislators, legislators in a foreign land. Jesus. Oh my God! Do you think that God only brought you to this state, to this plus city? Because you think the reason why God brought you here is just because of school alone? There is a reason God has brought you here. He saw that the righteousness will be seen upon the surface of the earth. Can you pray to that and say, God, I have not seen this thing find the expression yet. I want them to find the expression in my life. And we find the expression in them, mountain name of Jesus. That I hope you come to glory. In the name of Jesus. But so can it be so good. We are passing through the very place tonight. Beyond religion, beyond 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 religion, He's calling us to that place. Beyond everything else, Lord. He's calling us to that very place tonight. Jesus. He's calling us to that very place tonight. He's calling us to that very place tonight. The Bible says that when Jesus was done, He's calling us to that very place tonight. 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 Why would he not do good? He was anointed with dangerous combinations. With the Holy Ghost and power. Can you ask God, God, to know? These things are not finding us. This is a truth. This thing, I've read these things in the Bible. They are true. But they are not finding us in another life. Lord, I want to go beyond the physical. I want to go beyond the Logos. 
I want you to go beyond what is written in this place. I want you to go beyond what is written here. I want to go beyond. I want to interact with your spirits. Oh God, I want to interact with your angels. I want to interact with your angels. Do you know the angels can come into your room and minister to you tonight? Do you know that the Holy Spirit can talk to your heart tonight? In the mighty name of Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, take me Thank to you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Take me, Lord Thank Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you give you two minutes to launch yourself on the Spirit. Pray the Holy Ghost wherever you are. Just pray the Holy Ghost. Two minutes. Pray the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, when you pray the Holy Ghost, you are defying yourself. You are defying your spirit. You are defying yourself. Launch, 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 launch. Come and pray the Holy Ghost wherever you are. Bravo, Sambelega, Panda, Sida, Deus. All the other gifts are for the edification of the church. So out of you shall flow rivers of living water. And Tezo Prata is not trying to in your life yet. You can pray it out. You can pray it out. You have not seen angels minister to you. You can pray it out. These things are possible. They are possible. They are possible. They are possible. All of a sudden, you are confused. All of a sudden, you receive an understanding that is beyond your teachers. These realms are possible. They are possible. They are there so that you can walk into them. Lord, I walk into this realm tonight. I walk into this realm so God in my navigation with you. Oh, Salaman In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. I want Pastor Jumo to take over. Please, the Lord. Any. Any personal prayer points or anybody have any prayer points that you want us to pray about? Then personal, general, economical, national, international. I want us to pray about. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want us to first of all pray for Nigeria. Nigeria have uh, gotten celebrated as 60th. Uh, Independence and us to pray uh, that God will remember the nation, people are hurting, that God will put on righteousness and establish righteousness. We we'll also use uh, Nigeria as a point of contact to other nations and ask God that uh, righteousness should be established in all the nations of the world. I also want us to pray for the president. Uh, of the United States and the wife who has been diagnosed to have uh, uh, COVID, that God will uh, uh, grant them speedy recovery so that they can resume back to their work. Let's pray for Nigeria and uh, use Nigeria as a point of contact to other nations of the world that God will do what only He can do. It will, he will put on righteousness and establish righteousness in the nations of the world. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray for President Trump and the wife that God will grant them speedy recovery in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to lift Oxford to the hands of the Lord. Let's release angels of safety. We will do on this land a peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's remember men of God that God will use them mightily and strengthen them. Let's also pray for unbelievers that are still in darkness that God will shine for their light to the praise and glory of his name in Jesus mighty name we pray let's pray for our singles that God will work his wonders in their life they will not miss it they will be connected to their bone of their bone someone who will help them to move forward those who are married among us God will keep us together his love will reign in our relationship. 
those who have kids, the Lord will himself will minister to skip to, to the children. They will be they will be taught of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray for Pastor Justice, an instrument that God has used today, that as virtue have left him to be received from God, he will be energized in the name of Jesus. That even as he has opened his mouth to talk, speak the word of God, that God will speak to him too. God will take care of everything that concerns him. He will not miss it. He will not be found wanting. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Next week Friday, we are still going to have our prayer. And then uh, next week Sunday, the upper Sunday, uh, we will have our fellowship. And we will be looking at uh, world views. And as we look at world views, I thank God for the prayer points of today. Then we will be able to see... Uh, the relevance of today's prayer in line with the world views, okay, and how different perspectives that's different perspective. Praise the Lord! So, I really thank God for the prayer points today. The grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let's and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow and overtake us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Mm-hmm.